This video was sponsored in part by Skillshare. Everybody and welcome to today's video. Come give daddy a hug. It's so much sharper than last time. Last time I had like five live blades. This time they're all live blades and then I have one squiddy. Is that, does this show a change? Have I had a character arc? I never claimed to be smart, but I did claim to be me. It is that time of year again. Finally, we can all gather together and learn once and for all the battle songs that are in my collection at this specific month, on this specific day, at this specific time, until I inevitably buy another one immediately after this video goes live. That's right, today we're talking about my Balasong collection in 2022. If you're wondering where my Balasong collection 2021 is, accounting Brandon and I decided that it was probably silly to be naming the video after the previous year, so we're just gonna act like 2021 never happened. I'm sure you can all agree that it's better this way. We literally bought this calculator just so I could write boobies on it. <laughs> That's true! <laughs> Why did you let me do that? You're my accountant! <laughs> was that a write-off? <laughs> I'm a write-off. That's true. Speaking of write-offs, consider supporting us on Patreon. Tiers start at just three bucks a month and get you early access to videos like these. By the way, if you want a more in-depth look at all of my battle songs, I made an hour long collection video on my second channel. So check that out. Now, let's get into this whole collection thing, shall we? First up is a very weird one. It's my Squid Industries Tsunami. This is a very special and unique tsunami that probably shouldn't exist, just like Oil Boy. I'm very special and unique. <clears throat> oh. I was introduced to this strange relic in the middle of our Squid Industries tour. If you missed the videos about that, consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell so you don't miss any more in the future. At the headquarters, they have a beater box that includes rejected and damaged products for the staff to use however they want. And in this box, I found my wonderful boy. This tsunami is made entirely from scrap parts that weren't ever supposed to be used. Each one of the four pieces that make up the handles are from different points in the prototyping process with different patterns and textures between all of them. Each one of these scrap parts was also used as anodizing practice for some of the guys in the shop, which is why they're all different colors. The blade itself is a reject with machining errors, and I had my logo as well as willhirsch.gay etched into it in Comic Sans to match the cursed nature of the rest of the knife. Comic Sans being the best font, objectively. This thing is a perfect embodiment of what I cherish in a collection piece. When I first asked to buy it, Andre, who was showing it to me, said, wait, are you serious? Which was a valid question. Little did he know I was very serious and expressed my desire to Lucas, who then asked the exact same question. So, moments later, my brand new cursed tsunami was in the skilled hands of Vinny getting tuned up before TV slapped some amazing laser engraving onto it. And so, of course, being made of literal trash, this thing also flips like trash. If trash were code for fucking amazing, this thing flips so freaking good and has become one of my favorite knives to carry at all times. Vinny is a god of tuning and this thing feels perfect to flip. It's so light and fast and uh, just watch my Tsunami review for my full thoughts here. Also, every Tsunami comes with a certificate of authenticity and mine is no different. I present to you this absolute abomination of an authenticity card. Yes, it is supposed to hurt your eyes like that. Either way, this thing is so cursed and cool, carrying with it such an interesting story about the production of this balasong that I just couldn't pass it up. It's one of a kind in the most literal sense, and I'm glad to have it in my collection. Now, a lot of people have asked me about how I carry around my collection. Well, if you remember my first collection video from 2018, you probably remember my cute little yellow pelican case. When I bought this case, it was actually to limit myself. You see, I could only fit six balasongs into the case. And I thought at the time, if I have more than six balasongs, I have a problem. 
Well, it turns out that when you make a YouTube channel, you do have a problem. So here we are. This thing has served me very well, but is now way too small for my current collection. Therefore, allow me to introduce you to Pelican Case version 2.0. This is the Pelican Air 1535 in orange, of course. I ordered custom foam for it from MyCaseBuilder.com, and you can find a little tutorial for that on my second channel. It can hold way more than my previous case, and has wheels. Kids love wheels. I made it with a double layer design so that all of my ballast songs can sit on top and I can store whatever I want in the space underneath. All this is to say that now I own a lot of ballast songs. More than anyone needs for sure. Absolutely more than I could possibly talk about at length in this video. However, I did want to mention each of my knives somehow. Wait one second. And now, the ballast songs of his collection brought to you by Will Herc. Okay. A squiddy, a spider co pin, that's a valley of white panium, talus on seas. OSP matrix, two squid craker rigging, and the number eight emissary. A clone of the 42 glider co OG2 BRS alpha beast. Channel, max a subsidian, stitch steel alien, and the janky tsunami. A baron sense butterfly knife that is orange and a light of squiddy sea. A max ace custom pelican, and a machine wise delta 15. Two custom 51s, bad knives on Amazon, pro flipper from ELB. Atropos Kirit, I know that you fear it, but look at this cheap China crap. Flytanium Lucha and Glider Co Arctic and Max A Scorpius. JK is fixing my Monarch again because the handles still slap. Squid Industry Snakes, the Triton, the Mako, and the Squid Trainer V2. Talus on Covenant, Firefly, and all of these I'm borrowing. Fuck. <sighs> oh my god. You done? Uh huh. You did good, champ. Thanks. You done did it. <laughs> Oh my god. You're so sweaty. I'm so sweaty. <laughs> you did good, son. Thanks. Next up on this journey to the netherworld's bottom is the Max A Subsidian. Besides being a great way to open a portal to hell, <laughs> This knife is also a fantastic conversation starter. You see, it's got some of the strangest designs on the Balasong market. The handles are striking with this intricate rock texture and the blade is both bold and pointed. There are carbon fiber inserts that have gold accents on the faces matching the brass spacer weights on the side. Finally, even the spring latch here is super weird, looking more like bat wings than a latch. The obsidian is weird for more reasons than just the looks though. The way it flips is very strange to say the least. It's a lot lighter than it would seem and those brass weights at the end mean that the center of gravity for each handle is pretty far on the outside. The the balance of the knife itself though is actually pretty neutral and this leads to a very nice experience of the handles carrying momentum really well from trick to trick. Overall, I find this to be a really unique experience and I'm really happy to have it in my collection. Next up is a very different knife from the same company. This is the Max Ace Covenant V2. I had a Covenant V1 back in the day and I really enjoyed that thing. Flash forward to now and I happen to see this one going for a good price on the hashtag Balasong sale on Instagram. It's got titanium handles with very cool carbon fiber inlays and a wide and flat design that is a little weird to get used to, but one that I've come to love. Now, I really enjoy the way this thing flips and I look forward to slinging it around whenever I can. Also, it's well-built nature means that it makes for a great EDC and I use it for that all the time. Pull. I fucking obliterated that thing. This is a sharp knife. I'm the fruit ninja now, bitch. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Overall, the Covenant V2 is a new one for me, but I think it'll make for a mainstay in my collection long term. Alrighty then. For this one, it's the Matrix 2 by OSP. 
I have a bit of a history with this knife, and it's not all good, sadly. When I first received it, I found it to be in terrible condition. The tuning was absolutely horrible, and no matter what I did, there was no fixing how bad it sounded. The blade rattled against the handles and rubbed really bad while flipping. You can actually still see all of the marks on the blade from where it rubbed against the handles, which is kind of unacceptable for a balisong that costs... Oh... Now, normally I'd be able to fix a problem like this. I know how to tune bushings and washers, so I wasn't worried about that until I took the knife apart. The Matrix 2 is a special little snowflake with a proprietary tuning system. This system makes it so that not only does the bushing have to be the perfect thickness, but so do each of the four washers. This is a lot of small parts to worry about and is a little outside my wheelhouse when it comes to tuning. In this case, that means that I can't tune the knife myself and so I am forced to send it back to the maker to get it fixed. And that's exactly what I did. I asked OSP and they had me send it back to get it nice and tuned up. It didn't take them long and when I got it back about a week later, it was perfectly tuned. I am absolutely impressed with the level of customer service in this case and I'm glad my Matrix 2 is very well tuned now. However, OSP has been known in the past to have issues, so take my experience with a grain of salt. Jay at OSP said that they are trying to get better about that stuff and fix the things they messed up on in the past, which is awesome. That said, they might have been extra careful to get my stuff done simply because of who I am, so I'd still be wary when working with them as a company. Flipping wise, this thing is honestly pretty good. It's got a weird organic shape to the handle cutouts that add a surprising amount of grip, and the faux channel makes it sound fantastic. The improvement in tuning was absolutely necessary though, as before I honestly hated how it felt to flip. The tuning did fix this problem, but at the same time, it's not really anything revolutionary to me. I like it, but it doesn't blow me away like some of the other knives I've tried. In terms of my collection, I think it's a neat piece to have, but at the same time, it might not stick around forever is all I'm saying. But you know what will stick around forever? The skills you learn on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Invest in yourself and your own personal growth. You can find new skills, deepen your existing passions, or get lost in creativity. It's a platform curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they always are launching new premium classes. Do you have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography and filmmaking to graphic design and editing for videos like these, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. It's a big reason that I joined the platform myself. One of the classes I've taken recently was YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD by Marquez Brownlee. He's a pretty big inspiration for me and how we run this channel, so it was very cool getting to take a class with him. One big takeaway I learned was that when giving any figure like a number, you should always provide context for that number. It's something that I've already begun implementing into my writing process. I'm confident that if I get more helpful tips like this, it'll improve my ability to make these very videos, and that's some great value for me. So, if you're interested in taking a journey of learning, consider Skillshare. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. All right, so this one is a spicy one. I'm a spicy one. It's the Pro Flipper V1 Bowie by ELB. This is a gorgeous knife and something that I've wanted for a really long time. The Pro Flipper has been a staple of the Balasong community and I think there's a good reason for that. It is immaculately made with polished silver all around complemented by this darkened section in the middle cutout. The design of the V1 Pro Flipper is my favorite in the lineup and the use of silver and gray here really is an absolute favorite of mine. It's no secret that I prefer most of my knives to be raw metal instead of anodization. But when you can have things like contrast between dark and light points on that raw metal, that's what gets me going. Flipping wise, this thing is also amazing. I originally tried a Pro Flipper when I was checking out Lucas's personal collection and was blown away with how smooth it felt. Ever since that point, I have desired getting one. And so to say that I'm happy about this one is an understatement. It is seriously one of my favorite knives to flip now. It's a bit handle biased, which means it moves fantastically from trick to trick. And the overall design, while smooth, gives it a surprising amount of grip. It is a bit flat, which took a little getting used to and does impact the fanning performance slightly. But overall, it's an absolute gem of mine. And I think I'll be keeping it around for a long time.
And so we arrive at the cheapest of the bunch, the Squiddy by Squid Industries. Or should I say the Squiddy by Will Hirsch? Oh, oh by Will Hirsch. <laughs> I'm so tired of being this way. That's right, I am the maker of this very Squiddy. In case you missed it, while we were touring Squid Industries, I got to make my own Squiddy and here it is. This thing is super satisfying because of the personal touch it has for me. I've got the time and effort put into making this thing and that feels great. Also, the inclusion of my own custom logo on the backside doesn't hurt. Custom engraving on any product is always really cool, and you can actually get whatever you want engraved on your own Squiddy if you look on the website. They mainly do text, so you can just type out whatever you want it to say, but if you want a logo like mine, consider sending them an email to get that worked out. Flipping-wise, I do really love the Squiddy. It's an awesome little flipper with a great balance that is really surprising for a plastic trainer. It's nothing that'll knock your socks off, but it is crazy good for what it is. The custom nature of this one means that it's sure to stay in my collection basically forever. Okay, so a lot of the knives that I've mentioned so far are either really expensive or fully custom pieces. So for this spot on my list, I thought I'd mention a knife that anyone could buy and that I highly suggest that you do. That would have to be the Talisong Z by Flytanium and Elden Tally. This knife is an awesome example of the power of the Balasong community. The original Talisong was a fully custom item that you bought directly from Elden. It was a wholly unique design and was regarded for its durability and performance. Enter Flytanium, who reached out to Elden to partner and create this, their first production knife. This is a beautiful flipper which exists in the spirit of the original Talisong, but also aims to push forward and make itself more accessible to everyone in the process. Its design is beautiful and calls back to the original perfectly in my opinion. It's on bearings which are a little loud when you first get it, but once you wear them in, they feel great. Flipping wise, this thing is also fantastic. It's got the length and momentum to go trick to trick while also having plenty of texture over every inch of the handles for whatever you're trying to accomplish. For me, it's the combination of the round faces and flat sides of the handles that make it great for fanning and ladders at the same time. But yeah, this is absolutely what I would tell anyone looking to buy an amazing flipper for less than $300. It is absolutely top tier. Speaking of top tier, up next is my final pick for my absolute favorite battle song in 2022. But before that, I think it's about time we heard from a special boy. My special boy. Black and red. I may not be on fire anymore, but I am hot as fuck. 2021 was a crazy year for not only this channel, but for me, professionally and personally. It's been really interesting to see how my perspective on the whole Balasong hobby has changed. When I first started doing Brandon's Balasong Corner, I really was just a beginner who barely knew how to flip. But now I can't really say that I have a beginner perspective, especially when I have Will's obviously massive collection to try out and a sizable collection of my own. And of course, working with Will to make the videos that we do has inevitably increased the size of my Balasong collection. Also, this case is from Jerry Home. It's very nice and black and red, just like everything else in my life by choice. Now, let's get sucked into this bullshit like Link from The Legend of Zelda being sucked into a fucking like-like. <laughs> so first off, now that my collection has grown, I have a proper way to display all of my battle songs now, which was actually inspired by Will's setup that he has in his office. It's just a simple Ikea pegboard with the standard hangers, and it works shockingly well for displaying battle songs. Though, once I had gotten it all set up, I was reminded of how Will said earlier how he got a small balasong case to limit himself to only six balasongs. But thankfully, I only have six balasongs. Oh, fuck. Okay, sorry about that. On to the balasongs. If you followed the channel for a while, you know that I love my Squid Industries Crackle Rackin' V1. And I still do. 
It has started to give me issues with staying properly tightened and all that, despite using both Teflon tape and a Loctite in separate instances, but it's like two years old and I flipped it a ton, so I get it. And again, even after owning it for two years, I still regularly go back to it and I have a ton of fun flipping it. Now, the one I'm most excited about, Squid Industries Nautilus. It's a good, it's good, it's, it's good. I had eyeballed the Nautilus for years, like even before I had bought like my first Squiddy. I had looked at it for a long time and now getting to own one has been really, really cool. Especially because this has gone on a fucking wacky journey from starting as a winter inked black Nautilus to then being sent to a custom modder to get a red anodization and then being hand customized by Squid Industries themselves at their facility to achieve my dream of a red, black, and white color scheme. I love it. And it's held up really, really well, flips really, really nicely, and I haven't had any issues with it coming loose, which I can't really say for some of the other Bella songs in my collection. If you'd like to get my full thoughts on it, we made a full review of it. It was actually the first review that was mainly hosted by me, and it was a ton of fun. And also, for my true Legend of Zelda fans out there, I had to get a really, really cool custom engraving done while we were at Squid Industries. And here it is. And then from there, we have one that actually really surprised me this year. It's my Flytanium Kershaw Lucha. I want world peace. Will was a bro by not only hooking me up with a Flytanium Lucha, but also black handles and an acid washed blade. And of course, of course, <laughs> I had to take it a step further because I'm a goddamn adult that can make my own decisions. And sometimes making decisions means making everything in your life black and red. So I reached out to a fan and we traded handles. And then shortly after, Flytanium sent us a red handle because they heard how I wanted it to be black and red. And so now it's actually kind of unique because it has two logos on it, on both sides. And it's fun, I'm quirky, I'm a, I'm a quirky. And I really, really like how it flips. And now that I have my custom Balasong display, weirdly, I've been going back to this a lot more often than I thought I would. And it's got a really, really, really fucking good clack to it. It's nice. And of course, easily, obviously, the best feature of it is it makes a really, really good metallic clack when you bash it against your fucking skull. No. <laughs> All right, since I can't bash my skull in, I guess we can talk about the Triton V2. Our full review of the Triton just came out at the end of last year, and that has all the thoughts and chaos that you could want from me. So go watch that. In short, I like it, but in terms of my collection, it's probably my least favorite of the bunch. Sorry, Triton. Nope. Also to round out the squid stuff, I recently picked up a Squid Trainer 3.5. I'll save my thoughts for a future review, but what I'll say now is, pretty good. But I don't know that a battle song has ever given me such a large fear of having tinnitus. It's got a, I'm a clack guy, but that's it. That's it. Ooh. Now, weirdly, the battle song that I'm most excited to show off is yet again, black and red. Sorry, not sorry. Deal with it to BB Firefly. People have asked us to review this a lot. And we do have a review in production and obviously making a review only takes like five months. So we're, we're doing our best. But this thing has really left a solid impression on me. So when I first got it, there was a particular issue that I had with it and I reached out to BB Barfly and they had absolutely fantastic customer service. And they took my feedback and straight up fixed the way that they manufacture the BB Firefly, based on my feedback. Like the same day that I gave them the feedback. And this thing is a big old chungus. Big old big boy, big band, big boy, big boy. We're talking, we're th thick, damn. And it's most certainly not perfect, but it really is a ton of fun to play. My full thoughts will come in the full review, so I'm sorry for essentially cucking you throughout my entire segment this video. But I promise it'll be a good one, because I not only have mine, they also sent me a second one. I have one too. Nobody fucking cares. Mm. So stay tuned. But yeah, well, that's kind of it for my collection. It's kind of big now. 
To wrap things up, I really just want to express how blown away I am by the support that Will and I get from our community. We are seriously just continuously blown away by how cool everyone is and how you guys watching has really started to allow us to look at this whole YouTube thing as a real potential career path. And for me, that is a dream come true. Okay, blah, blah. I will now recede back into my stage persona. Yahoo! And so we finally arrive at the crux of the mountain. My favorite Bella song of 2022 is... Oh, who am I kidding? You saw the B-roll. It's The Alien by Stitch Steel. Oh. I mean, of course it's my favorite thing of this year. Just look at it. The design is iconic and incredibly original while still calling back to some of the staples of the Balasong hobby. This knife is completely handmade from scratch. And that means that Stitch went through all of the effort of cutting out the handle pieces from a slab of titanium with a bandsaw, drilling every single hole with a drill press and creating the curve of the handles on a belt sander. Stitch takes pride in the idea of not using any computer-aided machinery in his products, and I think that makes his artistry shine through in each and every knife he finishes. This one was made specifically for me and has a balance to match my preferences, which is really cool. Stitch likes to change the balance knife to knife to match what the owner likes, which means that every alien flips slightly differently. As for me, I think it flips fantastically. It's got a good weight to it and the handle bias means that it glides easily through tricks, but is also easy to ricochet and change direction quickly if needed. The grip on this thing is just fantastic. The full length design of the whole pattern with the sandwich handles means that it has good grip all over and I'm never really worried about it slipping out of my fingers. The roundness is just perfect and allows for fantastic control while fanning. Overall, this is just a really special piece that was made by a good friend of mine, and that just makes it all the more special. If you're interested in the process for making a knife like this, we're actually going to visit Stitch and see how it's done in a future video. So subscribe so you don't miss that. At the end of the day, this is absolutely my favorite battle song in the collection and one that I plan to keep forever. It's just that good. Nature. Nature, I hardly know her. Screw with confidence. All right, I think that's pretty much it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this look into Brandon and I's personal collections as much as we enjoyed making it. We tried to push some new boundaries with this one and I think it paid off. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. As always, we both want to extend the biggest possible thank you to our Patreon supporters. Without your support, we really wouldn't be able to spend as much time making these videos as we do. Each one of our videos takes multiple days of shooting along with writing, tons of editing work. So your support means that we can put more effort in to produce more stuff. So it's a win-win. If you'd like to join some awesome people on the private Patreon Discord, such as Zutra and Slinky, consider donating. Tiers start at just three bucks a month, and how else am I supposed to afford a house in this economy? Spoiler alert. You can't. Is that why I'm in an apartment? Now, if you'll excuse me, Brand and I are gonna go figure out what the heck we're gonna do with all these ballad songs. Well, so I heard you can get like millions of views just by throwing all of your ballasongs like right onto the ground. Why would anyone do that?